Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Corlick from Figure It Out Productions. The following video is a video of some kind, and I hope you enjoy it. Hey guys, it's Adam here, and welcome to the two-year anniversary of the Xbox Series X, provided you're watching this the day it came out. Uh, we'll get into all the details of that in a second, but if you guys could do me a favor, please like this video, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't done that already. Also, check me out on all the social media stuff in the description. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Discord, Patreon, Facebook, all that sort of stuff. It's all down there, as well as my new channel called Flying and Eating, which is about adventuring around the world, flying and eating stuff. It's pretty fun. Now, let's go ahead and actually talk about what you guys want to talk about. Um, the anniversary of the Xbox Series X. To those who I know just come here to watch the anniversary videos, first of all, thank you for being here. You should check out the other stuff, though. It's like it's fun. Um, I know there were people that really wanted me to do one for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, I didn't end up doing that because at the time that happened, I was dealing with a crisis regarding... like. It, it doesn't really matter, but my, my childhood home, my late mother's home, had a fire and an explosion, and I was in a bad place. <laughs> so it's okay now-ish, but anyway, that doesn't affect today. I just wanted to apologize to those who come for those and didn't know why that video never materialized. Anyway, let's talk about the Xbox Series X. So, yes, it has actually been two years since this thing came out, which is, I mean, I know I started a lot of these videos off with, like, wow, can you believe it, but in the case of the Series X... Yeah, I kind of can, because it's been kind of an underwhelming two years. Um, and I think a lot of that boils down to what this console is perceived as by Microsoft and what the console is perceived as by the rest of us. So, I'm an old man. <laughs> I'm 35. I'm at death's door, obviously, because that's what happens at 35. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, I'm fine. But, um, but basically, I grew up in an era where game console generations were traditionally like four or five years long. That's historically what it's always been. Believe it or not, if this was a normal generation cycle, this console would actually about halfway through its lifetime. Which is a little weird, right? Because if you have a Series X or you follow this at all, you also recognize there's not a whole lot of Series X specific stuff going on. Nor can you walk into a store and even buy it at this point. Strange, right? We live in odd times. And we're going to dive into a lot of that. But yeah, we don't live in that era anymore. Console generations aren't really defined by that. And you kind of actually can thank Microsoft for that specifically. Phil Spencer famously came out on stage at E3 once and kind of said like, we're kind of done with console generations. We're not really going to think of it that way anymore. And he lived up to that. Whether you consider that good or bad is uh, open to interpretation and, you know, obviously your own opinion. But regardless, that's the model they're following. <clears throat> and uh, so what that means in practical terms is that the Xbox Series X doesn't really feel like its own console so much as it feels like it just an upgraded version of the Xbox One. What I have right here, of course, is the Xbox One X, which was just an upgraded version of the Xbox One. In essence, this console is the same machine that Microsoft put out in 2013, the original VCR infamous model, yet obviously has better hardware. See, Microsoft is approaching this whole thing through system updates, but like physical system updates. I said since I got this thing... In my initial day one review, it didn't feel like a console in of itself. It felt like just physical firmware upgrades. That's what it is. Um, so it's just better hardware. And in that regard, it's good. Uh, and in this, in, but in regard of like uniqueness, what makes a console special to someone like me is the unique story behind any particular machine, whether it's good or bad, uh, interesting or not, the flop story, whatever it is, being its own unique piece of history to me is fascinating. Microsoft no longer approaches game consoles that way. Sony still does, Nintendo still does, Microsoft does not. And that has its pluses and its minuses. But the if you want to call it the original sin of that philosophy, uh, you can put that on Game Pass. Now, I'm sure a bunch of people, when they hear that, that sounds like, you're saying negative things about Game Pass? I, I hate you, I'm, I'm going to kill you. I understand that there are people who love Game Pass. I'm not even saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying, if you're going to analyze why this console is not that interesting in of itself, you have to understand why that is, and the reason is Game Pass. So, Game Pass is Microsoft's focus. Let's be very clear about this. That's why it's kind of hard to talk about this console uniquely over the last two years, because it's just a delivery mechanism for Game Pass. Can we just be honest about that? That's why it exists, is that Microsoft has been trying to essentially create Game Pass or Xbox as a gaming service 
since the launch of the original Xbox in 2001. Go back in time. Look at their original motivations for making that console. It was, they were afraid Sony was taking over the living room and they didn't want that. They wanted to be present. They wanted to be, you know, there. But they didn't have a whole lot of interest in hardware. Famously, the original Xbox left the market in uh, 2007 with losing $4.4 billion in the red. They lost a ton of money on that console and it would have killed anybody else that wasn't Microsoft. But they persisted. Obviously, with the 360, they made a ton of upgrades, and they started focusing everyone more on the uh, direction of, let's do everything online. Let's buy your games online. Let's focus all in that area. But it was still a very localized console. And then you get to the Xbox One, which initially just showed their hand by saying, let's do everything online exclusively, and you have to be online all the time, which obviously they unwound that a bit. And they made it more user-friendly and customer-friendly, I should say. Uh, and we kind of are at the point we are now. Now... That it was really just a mechanism to try and create Game Pass. You can even go back on this channel and watch these old anniversary videos that I've done for various consoles, most notably the Xbox One. Go all the way back. Even watch like the launch one. I'm pretty sure ever since then I've been talking about Microsoft is doing this because they want to build a Steam competitor. They want to create Xbox as a service. That's a thing. That's, that's clearly what their focus is. And now the goal is to just integrate Game Pass into other things. If you don't believe me, you're thinking like, no, obviously they care about their hardware. I'm not going to say they don't care at all, but it's not their focus. I can prove this to you. Samsung TVs are already shipping with Game Pass as a pre-built app. You don't need to have an Xbox to play Xbox. Same goes for PC. You can play Xbox as a service on a PC. Don't have to own an Xbox. Watch that. That will continue to expand. Xbox Game Pass will be an app on more things as time goes on. I imagine the first wave of it is more TVs. I would not be surprised if they eventually do some sort of watered down version that's integrated into the Nintendo Switch. I think Microsoft would like to put it onto PlayStation hardware, but I don't think Sony is going to cooperate with that. That's a different discussion, but it would not surprise me if we continue to see that in there. Now, I'm not saying Microsoft is gonna stop making hardware for now. For now, I think they're going to continue to just work on this and you know have that as their delivery mechanism, but it's clearly not what they prioritize. Um, and I just I find that fascinating because that essentially means that this this isn't a unique console unto itself. That's why it's interesting because I I actually really like it. I play it all the time. It's like my primary everything media center my etc uh, it's where i go to for my games but it's only that good because it has like the entire archive of the xbox one it has a substantial chunk of the 360 and to a lesser extent the original xbox of course all the media functionality that goes with that i mean this thing plays music cds sony gave up on that over a decade ago and it's their format or at least partially their format it's it's a very nice machine it's just not a very interesting one and that hasn't really changed over the last year. Do you know what's kind of changed in regards to this console specifically over the last year? The artwork on the games, and that's kind of about it. So if you look at like, here's an Xbox One game basically. This is Alex Kidd in Miracle World. Now technically this is one of the newer ones as it doesn't say Xbox One anymore, it says Xbox. But the only thing that made this different from this to this was a little sticker and a little mention of the Xbox Series X. That was it. Um, because the whole point was to just make all the games here just work on here. And if you're playing them on here, in theory, there might be some enhanced patches and updates and so on and so forth that make it better, make it all in 4K or, or whatever the case might be on a case-to-case -case basis. Finally, they've updated that, and you have things like Sniper Elite 5, which actually have redesigned it. They, While they still mention the Xbox One, they kind of make it less of their focus. They put more about the Series X. They put the Xbox Series X first. Well, okay, technically it was first here, but... Yeah, they, they essentially finally come up with new artwork specifically for this. However, the amount of games that are actually unique to this machine where they don't work on an Xbox One or Xbox One X is comically small. I think last year I mentioned the only game I was aware of that did that was Flight Simulator. And to be brutally honest, that's still the only game I can think of. I think there was actually like one of the NBA 2Ks actually had an Xbox One specific disc for some... Or Xbox Series X specific disc for some reason. But... Aside from that, and there might be more, I'm not saying they're not, I'm just saying that's the only one I could think of. Which tells you something. The console is not their priority. 
the ecosystem is. And that ecosystem is Game Pass. So it's it's just kind of fascinating times we're living in because I think the whole point of all of this, which has been kind of their mission statement since the launch of the original Xbox, is just make Microsoft relevant in gaming. And the way they're doing it now, as you guys know, is they've been buying up developers. Now, funny enough, on the video I did last year on this exact same subject when it was the one year anniversary, I actually specifically said I predicted they were going to buy Activision. And shortly after that, that's when they launched that whole thing. I called that. <laughs> I did. And where are we a year later? Well, the acquisition went through between the two companies. However, and I'm no expert on this, it does have to be approved by the, ju the judicial system of every single government in which uh, those companies operate. And it's it may not actually go through, as weird as that sounds. Uh, like, Saudi Arabia, I think, was the first country that actually said, yes, this merger is totally fine. However, I think the UK in particular is actually, it looks like they're going to block it. Now, maybe it'll maybe Microsoft will find a way through on that. I'm not totally sure. But the reason they're all considering blocking it is monopoly logic. Like, Microsoft maybe is getting a little too big in the gaming division where they're just upright absorbing entire ma uh, major companies. I know Sony has been fighting really hard against this. Um, so we'll see. I, I don't know how that's going to pan out in the U.S. I don't think it's gone through yet. We we'll see. Now, again, I'm no expert on all this. I don't know if it means like in Saudi Arabia, there's going to be, you know, versions of Call of Duty that don't have Activision's name on it. And they have Microsoft only. On. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know enough about that. Um, we'll see if what happens with that. But I will say, and I'm going to make another prediction here, that Microsoft will not be absorbing another developer here for quite some time. I think they might have bit off a little more than they can chew with the pursuit of Activision, and I think they're going to want to wait for some serious time for that to just calm down, assuming they even resolve it. If that does fail, then I can see them going after some smaller fish. I don't know which. I wouldn't imagine them trying to buy anybody up that big. I'm thinking a lot more like indie studios and stuff, and less like... EAs, for example, but you never know. I mean, it is Microsoft. Um, so, yeah, that's... I think the goal has been a complete digital ecosystem for the Xbox brand really since over 20 years ago. Uh, and I... Obviously, I think their motives and methods in which they wanted to achieve that goal have changed and over time. It's not like they had a very clean, logical plan that worked all the way through. But now they're at the point where it's like, okay, if we just buy up a bunch of these companies, essentially we'll have that because people won't have a choice. Now, I'm not a huge fan of that, to be completely honest, because I'm not a big fan of digital gaming content in general, but I'm also not the biggest fan of, like, monopolistic practices. But I'm kind of torn on that one because I also recognize the other benefits that can come with it. And one that I've pointed out is Microsoft got rid of the backwards compatibility program, not because it was too technically challenging or anything like that, or that the demand was too low, although the demand was low, but at the same time, they've proven that they do it, They, regardless of the demand, they just do it to do it. Because um, essentially, the Xbox division is like a jobs program over at Microsoft. Um, but they're doing it, uh, but they're running into lots of legal complications. The thing is, when you make a game backwards compatible uh, through the way in which Microsoft does it, you need to reacquire licenses to do that. Uh, I'm gonna go over this again just because this is, can get confusing for people. The reason, say, the PlayStation 2 uh, was backwards compatible with the PS1 and didn't need anybody's permission to do that was because it was reading the original PS1 discs uh, and it wasn't trying to do anything else other than play those discs. So the, no refreshing of licenses was necessary. The way Microsoft does it is not the same method. Even though your discs will work, when your disc goes in that's made compatible, all it does is detect the disc. That's it. It doesn't, it doesn't actually read that disc beyond that point. It just says, oh, okay, you have a backwards compatible game. Let me hop on the internet and grab a digital Xbox One or Xbox Series X rebuild of that game and you know throw it on your console and you can play it that way. The disc is nothing more than an unlock key for a data file you've downloaded. But because of that difference in game delivery method, you essentially have to refresh the rights because in, you're changing the product from its original version. And because they intend to digitally resell these games, license, you have to know who you're paying, right? So all I'm trying to say is a bunch of companies either didn't cooperate or it was unclear who really owned those assets because assets get split between games, etc. Uh, 
See, the cops will come and get you if you break the law. So you can hear them out there. Sorry about the sirens. But, um, yeah, so they had to refresh a lot of that stuff. But the merger of acquisition, acquisition, the acquisition of Activision uh, will actually mean a whole bunch of additional uh, licensing rights fall under Microsoft's umbrella, which means a whole bunch of games might actually come into existence. Partially, this is the reason, and it finally happened, GoldenEye is getting its infamous re-release. This is partially due to the fact that Microsoft essentially is acquiring Activision. Do you know why that matters? GoldenEye famously was a game that was made based on a movie. It was never supposed to be this big successful game that it blew up into. But what happened was it ended up in like, you know, a hell essentially, a legal hell, because it was owned by multiple parties. Nintendo owned a chunk of it, Rare owned a chunk of it, uh, and then its eventual IP holders owned a chunk of it. The IP holders being the people who own James Bond game rights uh, in perpetuity. For a while that was EA. Eventually, those rights ended up in Activision's hands. So Activision owned essentially a third of GoldenEye for a long time. Rare owned a third of it, but then Microsoft bought Rare. So thus, Microsoft owned a third of it. Now Microsoft owns two-thirds of it, and Nintendo is suddenly like, well, we own a third, you own two-thirds, let's settle this. And that's why you're getting that game on the Switch, and why you're getting it on the Xbox ecosystem, but you're not getting it on PlayStation because Sony didn't have a stake in it. The irony is Sony actually owns the film rights, <laughs> or at least they did. Um, I don't know if they still do. But uh, regardless, you also had to settle deals with like, you know, Pierce Brosnan because it was a likeness issue. So you had to settle all that, which I'm sure Microsoft's like, whatever, let's just throw some money at that. I don't even care because that game will come into existence. Now, I doubt it will ever get a physical edition, though. I hope it does. But as I understand it, it's only delivery mechanism on the Xbox brand, at least currently, is either through Game Pass or people who had digital versions of Rare Replay. It's just going to be one day like added to that, so you just have it as a bonus. But I guess those of us who bought it physically are getting screwed on that, and I don't know why. Um, that kind of pisses me off, to be completely honest, but hey. Uh, all I'm saying, the only point I'm trying to make with all of this is that the merger of act acquisition of God, I keep doing that. Of Activision would mean that uh, potentially Microsoft could expand on the backwards compatibility library. And as someone who's big into game preservation, I very much support that idea. But is that worth it? Is that worth it at the extent of more monopolistic practices? I don't know. <laughs> you know, and I'll leave that to you guys to judge. Um, I'm I'm sure a lot of people would say no, and a lot of people would say yes. It's like there are certain advantages to everything being under one roof, but at the same time, there's a lot of disadvantages to that. So I'm not gonna. I, I don't have a very strong opinion either way. I'm like I'm. I see where both sides are on that one. So, yeah. But how do we, you know, how do we rate the Xbox Series X itself over two years? Forget all the Xbox Game Pass stuff. Forget the fact that it's like essentially just an upgraded version of the console Microsoft launched in 2013. How did it in of itself do over the last two years? Not much. <laughs> and that's kind of the problem. Because it really didn't have much to stand out and make itself special as a unique iteration in console history. Um, as I said, as far as I know, there's only still one game physically that exists exclusively for it. I'm sure there are others, but that's the only one I can think of. But even then, it's, it's not many. Um, and one of the biggest problems with it is it's, it's two years. Again, if this was a traditional game site, uh, game generation, this, this would be halfway through its life cycle. Yet, you still can't go into a store and buy it for the most part. You find that odd? I do, but at the same time I understand why that happened. It's called the end of globalization, uh, which is a completely different issue for, uh, let's say a political channel, but all I'm gonna say is that, to the very basics of that, the reason you haven't been able to get this is the last 30 years, uh, the world has kind of existed under a very specific economic model in which various countries participate because they excel at one thing or another and everybody kind of puts their pieces together and then it's all assembled, uh, usually in China, and then it's delivered. But over the last couple of years, starting with the pandemic, um, that system has been breaking down due to uh, political instability in various countries and, you know, economic motivations in certain countries. There's, there's a whole lot of factors. But basically, this careful balancing act that made all of this stuff work is breaking down. Uh, and thus, they can only produce so many of these things as opposed to a different era in which they could produce a bunch of them. Now, that sucks <laughs> uh, for a lot of reasons that we're not really going to go into. But... 
it's Microsoft, I think, was better prepared for this than Sony was. You know, Microsoft obviously had been betting on the digital ecosystem and they were like, hey, all of our previous consoles are going to be right in that ecosystem. You still have a VCR Xbox One? Most of our new games are still going to work on that. Yeah, they won't look as good. Yeah, they won't be as pretty. But they'll work. You'll be able to play the basic game. That kind of gave them an advantage. And what I think is fascinating about all that is we've reached a point in time where... I don't know if you guys have ever looked at the Japanese sales numbers of the Xbox versus the PlayStation 5. It's the first time in history where the PlayStation 5 is not dominating. It's beating it, but only barely. Like, we're talking like a few thousand units difference. That's insane. And it turns out even the Japanese, who have been like vehemently anti-Xbox, except for that brief hiccup with the Xbox 360 that where they loved it before Microsoft screwed it, um, with that exception, this is the first time the Japanese have really kind of got on board with it, because for the same reason. They're like, Game Pass is pretty cool. <laughs> like, they just, they love it. Um, which is... It's kind of mind-boggling <laughs> to me, to be completely honest. Um, but yeah, no, it's cool. I, we'll talk more about Sony, obviously, in their own video. That's going to be right around the corner. But yeah, it's it's really hard to talk about the Series X itself. Do you guys understand why, like, after all of this? Like, everything around it is kind of fascinating, and all the circumstances that led to it, and what Microsoft is doing in general with Game Pass is interesting. But the actual console is just kind of there. It's just an upgraded version of this, which was an upgraded version of a different machine. And that makes it kind of odd. And so if you want a prediction on this, um, I do think we're going to see another iteration of the Xbox. Now, whether or not we would consider that another generational upgrade is debatable. I, I believe they'll do at least another half cycle thing. So where that kind of comes from is, historically speaking, like I said, generations are like four to five years, right? Uh, what screwed this all up was the 2008 economic crash. The Xbox 360 and PS3 were not meant to last as long as they did. They really should have been phased out around 2010 at the latest 2011 instead of 2013. That extra two years, three years, was kind of significant. The only reason they were around that long is because people were in no economic mood to buy new consoles. So it was like, we got to just make the ones we've got work. Uh, and that kicked everything down the line. I think the Wii U got kind of trapped in that, unfortunately, but it's it's what happens. Um, and that's why the Xbox One, when it came out, really should have been the machine that came out in like 2010 or 2011, and this machine should have come out in like 2016. Where that caused a lot of problems was the consoles were anemic. The Xbox 360 was not really a capable console in 2013 uh, when the Xbox One launched. It should have been phased out like three years prior. So where this eventually caught everybody was the halfway cycle on the 8th gen console. So the Xbox One launched out of date. The PS4 launched out of date as well, just a little bit less out of date. And that's why they invented that concept of mid-generation upgrades, hence your PS4 Pro and your Xbox One X. And I think Microsoft got a little addicted to that because when they realized that worked, they're like, why not just keep doing that? We don't care that much about the hardware anyway. We can just use the same ecosystem and we can just launch slightly upgraded versions, kind of like you do a cell phone. Um, and we'll just do that. Hence this. It's just that we've decided there's a division right here. Now, why did we decide that? I would bet we decided that just because of the PS5's existence, not so much because of these saying, hey, we're totally different. Because they're not. The only major difference between the two of them is this one doesn't support Kinect titles. <laughs> um, but yeah. So we'll see how this plays out. I do think they'll do another upgraded version of this, maybe a smaller one. Uh, whether or not it has a disk drive is the question. So one thing we have had time to look at, and I've been saying this for the last two years, is digital editions versus physical editions, which one's going to win? Both sides had perfectly legitimate reasons, I would say, to try both. Both would definitely prefer to have digital-only platforms, especially Microsoft. So for them to have one that would truly succeed would be exceptional for them because it would be a cost-cutting measure and it would also people would become more addicted to Game Pass as it would be their only delivery method other than straight outright digital purchases, which is a different discussion, but whatever. You would be tied to their ecosystem rather than going out and having the option to buy games used or physically what have you, wherever you want. Um, but Microsoft's had two attempts at this. The Xbox Series S and the Xbox SAD, a.k.a. the Xbox One S all disc, or all digital, all disc. Um, and both of them failed. 
Uh, the sad, people barely even remember that one now. But yes, that was a thing, and it, it didn't do well. Now, I always thought it didn't do well because of the time in which it came out. It just didn't make any sense. But the Xbox Series S has been out of the market for two years. Of the four iterations of these consoles, meaning the Xbox Series X, the Xbox Series S, the PS5 disc, and the PS5 discless, all four of those, the Xbox Series S was the only one regularly you could go into a store and buy, which told you a lot about its demand. People didn't really want it. Now, they didn't really want it for a few different reasons. One, it was anemic hardware by comparison of this version of the Xbox, and also the absence of a disk drive. There are obviously people that got behind it because they liked the idea of a budget version of the console that would have a great access to Game Pass, and if that's all they wanted to do, that was great. The problem with that, though, is this exists and served just about the exact same purpose, just not quite as well as the Series S. And I think that, from what I've read recently, it looks like they might be phasing the Series S out and kind of calling, you know, waving the white flag on the whole all-digital version, at least for now. That said, I guarantee they'll do that again at some point. Maybe just this time have do the Sony model where it's, you have them competitive. Same hardware, just sans disk drive. We'll see. But I do think whatever Microsoft puts out next as an upgraded version of this, because I don't think this is they're going to make like a straight-up brand new console. I think we're going to go with an upgrade like this. I think that version will have a disk drive just because there's, they've seen the numbers, they've seen how few people seem to embrace the all-digital version, keep the disk drive for people who are happy with that, while continuing to just try to win over people in different directions. I cannot, I don't have Game Pass, I want that very clear, and I cannot tell you how many times Microsoft has sent, like, hey, do you want a year of Game Pass for free on us? Because they want to get you hooked on it. I understand how that goes. Uh, it, and they keep upping those offers. Like, at once it was like, oh, here's a month, here's three months, here's five months, uh, here's a year. And they just kept, they keep doing it. They're going to keep doing that to everybody until they eventually hook them in. That's why the games with gold service got worse, is they started being like, eh, it's going to cost more, and we're going to take the 360 games off, and then people riot it, and they're like, okay, we'll keep the price the same, but we got to get rid of the 360 games, blah, 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 blah. They're just trying to get everybody unified into the Game Pass direction. And I think that the if they want to be successful in that, keep the disk drive on there so that people like me aren't pissed off, but at the same time, you gradually try to convince more and more of us to go. Like, I'm going down with the ship. I understand that. I'm the physical media guy. I'm never leaving it. But I can't tell you how many of my buddies are like, yeah, physical media forever. Except Game Pass. I love Game Pass. <laughs> it's it's a thing. So, yeah, that's that's pretty much all I got to say on the last two years with this thing, which is mostly just a history lesson about the console in general. Because as I said, that's the sad irony of it. The console itself did not have a particularly interesting two years. <laughs> anyway, uh, stay tuned. I will be doing the same thing for the PlayStation 5. Thank you guys very much for watching. Please do me a favor. Like this video, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't done that, as well as follow me on all the social media stuff, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, Patreon, etc., as well as my new channel, Flying and Eating. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all later.